So it's over to my beautiful kids. So for prophecy, it was Nico's like, going. Yep, for prophecy. Um, uh, like a prediction of the future, kind of. Beautiful. It's almost as if we scripted that, but that was real. <laughs> prediction of the future. Awesome. Okay, apparition. We have a, a number of apparitions in the play. Go for it. Is it like a spirit or a, or a ghostly figure that that comes out and 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 also kind of predicts the future? Awesome. Or, or gives like a a telling. Like a warning. Like this a is warning. good. This is good. It is a ghost. Like, apparently, from my definition, it's a ghost or a ghost-like um, image that I assume we're thinking is actually not really there. Mm. Right. So an apparition, and finally, an, a hallucination. It's something that someone sees that actually isn't there. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. And actually, we ages ago looked at the Latin for that, which is interesting in Latin, is to wander mentally. Or as Charlie is saying, yeah, you think that something's there, but it is not. Prophecy. Okay, so Act 1. Of course, the whole play is really centered around these uh, prophecies by the witches. So my crew are going to tell me the three prophecies that the witches tell Macbeth in their order too the first original one the first one right. yeah so and this is when the witches meet Banquo and Macbeth it'll be Fane of Wands right what was the question yes there? perfect yeah. so the first one is Fane of Glams second one Fane of Cordor you will be Fane of Cordor and finally the big one He'll be king. He'll be king. Excellent. That's the one he's really into. He will be king. Of course, that great word they use there is hail. Yeah. And I and Macbeth, you can already see from the beginning, he loves it. He is into it. Banquo says probably shouldn't trust these three <laughs> weird sisters, but we know that um, Macbeth is really, really into it. Cool, so let's fast forward. We know he returns to um, the witches later in the play. They've got their cauldron there and a number of apparitions come up out of the cauldron. So this is a tricky part. We're gonna try and get it in the order as well. So yes, our first one is beware Macduff. Now we went a step further and said who speaks that. It is not the witches. Who says it? Isn't it like a head? Like a night head? It's an armed head. Thank you so much. It's an armed head. I suppose meaning with the armour on. Yeah. So just a head. Yeah. Beware Macduff. So our second apparition. P.S. My class have no notes with them right now. So this is amazing. Second apparition. Um, Would it you shall not be like Macbeth shall not be killed by anyone of woman born or something like that. Perfect. Yep. So the second one is the famous none of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Okay. So I'm just going to call that none of woman born, which we know is what sort of language technique are they doing when they when it says that equivocation. Why is it an equivocation? Well, Charlie? because it's a half truth an ambiguous half truth awesome. that is deliberately designed to lead Macbeth in the wrong direction what does he believe then charlie when he well, hears that he believes that everyone is born from a woman so yeah. therefore he cannot die he's invincible amazing great answer perfect so this is also if you're wanting extra marks in your writing please remember that that is as Charlie says, an equivocation, so a deliberate misleading statement. Um, so we did check our notes before we filmed. I wonder if anyone can remember who then says that. What is the apparition saying this? A bloody child. Thank you so much. This is said by a bloody child. Third apparition. And this is another equivocation. So something deliberately weird and difficult to understand. Um, Macbeth shall not be harmed till Burnham Wood moves to Dunsinane. Perfect. Okay, so nothing shall harm you until 
Burnham Wood moves to, oh, good, I got the spelling, I think. So nothing shall harm you until Burnham Wood moves. So as a reader, you're thinking, wait, how can a forest move? Of course, Macbeth is thinking, how can a forest move? That's impossible. Who says this one to him? What is the apparition speaking? Is it another child? It's another child. Carrying a tree. The child is carrying a tree. Uh, Was a crown on his head. Crown. Yeah, cool. So child with crown holding a tree. Okay, awesome. And our final apparition, what comes out of the cauldron? The final one that he sees. This is the one that spooks him intensely. I just realized with the child who's holding the crown mm. of the tree, it's literally a, uh, like foreshadowing to when they were holding the tree branches. I only took my god, thank you. I'm so glad we got that on camera. <laughs> I agree. As I wrote it, I was like, that's got to symbolize something. <laughs> is it as literal as Burnham would when he's holding a tree? But no, it's foreshadowing how they actually do ambush Macbeth in the end. Stunning. Love this. Fourth one. The most terrifying thing of all to Macbeth. The line of um, Macduff, or is it the no, Macduff or Banquo? Banquo. Banquo yep. kings. Oh um, God, it's his worst nightmare. Eight, eight of them. Okay. Keep in mind that the, the witches did say, you've had enough after one, two, three. They were like, enough, you, like, you need to chill now. It's Macbeth that says, show me more. And they are sort of like, well, you wanted to see it. So he did request to go there. And it's this one, of course, that freaks him out the most. So I'm going to do a little crown. And we do two, three. I'll speed this up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just draw this because it can help you remember stuff. Okay, so... Uh Okay, who's going to kick us off? What is the first hallucination? Yep. Uh, Macbeth seeing the dagger. Correct. Can you tell me a line from that? Um, that part is of the this play? a dagger which I see before me, the handle toward my hand? Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not, and yet I see thee still. <laughs> <laughs> you might guess what we look bad. <laughs> it's the only thing he's studied. <laughs> Charlie Thank you, Charlie. Correct. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right now, Whoa. Is this a dagger I see before me? A little dagger to remember it. Incredible. Charlie's just said a number of lines from a larger chunk of text in the play. What do we usually call that larger chunk of text? A soliloquy. A soliloquy. Awesome. Thank you. It is this. I'm going to have so much fun editing. This. We'll cut out all the stuff. Is this a dagger I see before me? Of course, it is not real. He feels it is leading him to commit the murder. Cool. Thank you, Charlie. So, number two, a second hallucination. Yes. Is this the one where um, Lady Macbeth sees blood on her hand? Oh, in my order. I am going to take it, but it's number three. So, thank you, Kashi. Um, so, we've got. Lady Macbeth. Now, stay with Kashi. Can you tell me a line from that section? So think for a sec. She's got, she's pissed off that she can't get the blood out of, imagine in the carpet, on her hands. Lady Macbeth, she says, out something something. Damn spot. Damn spot, love it. <laughs> awesome. Out damn spot is her famous one as she's getting angry. She can't get rid of the blood that's not even there. Okay, so she starts to look more and more unhinged. Okay, mind you, the only people seeing her start to lose it are who? It was the, like, doctor and yeah. some other check. Mm -hmm. Is it a, they call it a gentlewoman, I yeah. think? Yeah. yeah, like, so her little, her um, assistant, I suppose. Yeah. They start to notice you know, the sleepwalking, etc. So the blood is not actually there. So that leaves our second apparition. Oh, sorry, our second hallucination. Yeah, we'll go, yep, help each other out. Banquo's ghost. Brilliant, it's the Banquo's ghost <laughs> scene. Banquo's ghost, can anyone give me a line from that? Oh, 
the fact yeah we've yep the gory locks awesome so we have our prophecies apparitions and hallucinations in their order hopefully helping you remember some quotes as well thanks to my beautiful crew we're done <laughs>